I'm going to uh, present uh, some aspect of the work of uh, Wojewodzki in type theory uh, from a mathematical viewpoint rather than from a logical viewpoint. Although logic is a part of mathematics, uh, there is still some kind of difference between uh, what logicians like to do and what uh, mathematicians like to do. And I think it is really worthwhile to understand type theory and to uh, have a mathematical presentation may be useful because uh, I think that uh, type theory is something everybody can, every mathematician can understand. Um, so this is a joint work with uh, Mathieu Anel, uh, Georg Biedermann, and Eric Fenster. Uh, the first part of my talk will be about the presentations of, uh, um, of type theory and the work of uh, uh, Vladimir. Uh, but uh, for the second part, and this is where this is uh, the joint work, I'm going to describe application of uh, univalence. And um, so I would like to look at uh, uh, type theory, or maybe homotopy type theory, or maybe univalent type theory as an axiomatic system for doing homotopy theory. Of course, there is also the possibility of having a foundation of mathematics using uh, univalent type theory, but I will mainly discuss uh, the axiomatization of homotopy theory from the point of view of type theory. And it may be worthwhile to read this uh, uh, sentence of Whitehead in 1950, because homotopy theorists have been interested in developing axiomatic homotopy theory since quite some time. There are traditional axiomatic systems in homotopy theory, uh, triangulated uh, categories, for example, uh, Verdier, I guess we should also add Grothendieck there. Uh, another one is homotypical algebra. And you have also uh, uh, another system introduced by Grothendieck around 1984. I'm not sure exactly what the date, uh, derivators. Now, recently, more recently, there are new axiomatic systems. Uh, you may regard higher toposes uh, uh, of uh, Charles Reck and Jacob Lurie as some sort of axiomatic system for homotopy theory. And then you have this uh, homotopy type theory developed by Wojewodzki and uh, independently, uh, Awudi and Warren. And more recently, you have cubical type theory by uh, Coca and collaborators. Uh, there are uh, big differences between these uh, axiomatic systems, um, and I am going to discuss that. Uh, well, a univalent type theory is obtained by adding the univalence principle to Martin Love type theory. I will. Uh, Describe the invalence, uh, discuss the invalence principle in some detail. And uh, the goal of uh, Boyevatsky Univalent Foundation Program is to apply univalent type theory to the foundations of mathematics. And another goal is to develop computerized proof assistant based on univalent type theory. Actually, uh, computerized uh, proof assistant have played uh, an important role into the discovery of uh, univalent type theory because if I get the story right, uh, uh, 
uh, Vojvodsky started to um, play with uh, the Cox system uh, because it's a proof assistant that can be used to check uh, the correctness of a proof in mathematics. And um, playing, while playing with this uh, learning, actually he followed the course, I think, uh, on, uh, uh, on the system Cox at Princeton University. He told me that it was very painful to actually learn uh, this subject because it's completely different from the usual kind of mathematics that he was doing. But eventually he uh, sort of understood what was going on there and he saw that there was a connection with uh, homotopy theory and this is where he had the idea of developing what he called uh, homotopy lambda calculus. Uh, and, um, of course, important advances were made at the special year on Univalent Foundation Program at the IAS in 2012 and 13. It was a fantastic year. I, 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 was, I had the uh, opportunity to come and I was very uh, uh, enthusiastic about it. And uh, there was an atmosphere of, of collaboration uh, during the whole year uh, between everybody there exchanging ideas. It was a fantastic time. And um, uh, yes, as I said, the development of cubicle type theory uh, is a huge step forward. But there are many questions, to, many questions remains to be solved before uh, really giving a foundation of uh, mathematics uh, using univalent type theory. Of course, one could give some kind of foundations of mathematics, but the idea is that it should become really useful for mathematicians, something that you should use like uh, uh, tech, for example. Uh, imagine that you have a proof assistant, which is kind of universal, and every mathematician sometime just turn to this proof assistant and write down a proof in there and sometime publish maybe a paper with that. This, is, this was the dream of, uh, of uh, Voivodsky, that uh, the, these uh, proof assistant using univariant foundation would be really available. It should, they should be user friendly. That's very important. It should be user friendly. So it's, it's not only just uh, uh, a theoretical uh, foundations of mathematics that we are looking for, but it's a practical, a practical one. Okay. Uh, so the goal of my talk is to present uh, univalent type theory semantically to discuss uh, Voivodsky univalence principle and to describe application. And I believe that every mathematician is actually using type theory without being aware of it. I mean, this is, so you know already type theory. This is not some kind of bizarre things coming from March, but this is something very close to what you're doing in practice. Uh, and that in some sense, Voivod's key invariance principle is to type theory what the induction principle is to piano arithmetic. It's a very powerful and fundamental uh, axiom. I, I prefer to call it a principle than an axiom. Okay. We, and um, so I'm going to describe how univalence implied descent in higher topos. I will describe what descent mean in higher topos. And then uh, descent uh, implies a generalized, a generalized blacker's massey theorem. Uh, and the blacker's massey theorem is a fundamental result of homotopy theory. You get the uh, fundamental suspension theorem from it and many other things, uh, you know, the post the Postnikov Tower can be understood very, very f well with using the uh, Blaker's Massey theorem. And with the generalized Blaker Massey theorem, you can understand a good Willy calculus. You see. And all this sort of uh, come out from um, uh, Voivodsky univalence uh, principle. Uh, so uh, in order to uh, present type theory semantically, I will describe 
the, an abstract notion of tribe. A tribe is a category with uh, a collection uh, of maps called fabrations satisfying certain axioms. And, um, uh, and then uh, I will uh, go on and uh, explain what is univalence, univalence and descent, the Blakers, Massey theorem, generalized Vasicki theorem, etc., etc. Uh, okay. Uh, why a tribe? I will explain what a tribe is, but uh, it was observed by. Uh, uh, quite early on, uh, Gambino and Garner, uh, that if you take the syntactic system of type theory, you can uh, construct a category from it. This is called the syntactic category. And this syntactic category uh, happens to be what I'm going to describe a tribe. And every tribe also is a brown fabrication category. Okay. Uh, before a tribe, there is a sort of more general notion called a clan. A, 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 clan. Uh, a clan is a category equipped with a class of uh, carryable maps called fabrations. Now, uh, I define what is a carryable map here. Uh, a map is carryable if you can pull it back, a map from X to B, P is credible if you can pull it back a along any other map. Okay. And uh, if you do that, the projection pi 1 is called the base chance of p along f. I think the terminology carable is maybe coming from Grothendieck. Uh, OK, now what is a TLA? A TLA is a category equipped with a class uh, of maps called fabrations satisfying uh, these axioms. Every isomorphism is a fabrication. The composite of two fabrications is a fabrication. Every fabrication is carryable, and the base chains of a fabrication along any map is a fabrication. Uh, the category C has a terminal object, and the unique map from an object to the terminal one is a fabrication. In the language of homotopy theorists, you would say that uh, every object is fabricant. Okay, now, since we have notions of TLA, uh, there is a notion of homomorphisms of TLA. It's a functor that preserves fabrication and base change of fabrication as well as terminal object, the obvious thing, okay? So that's somehow a basic notion, the notions of TLA. I will uh, explain in a moment why uh, the terminology in a moment. Okay. Now, if you have a TLA, uh, you can introduce a notion of anodyne map. Uh, that's the uh, definition there. It means that uh, uh, the map U, let's say, is anodyne if, if, if it has the left lifting property with respect to every fabrication. If you are familiar with the notions of model category, you will recognize that, uh, that uh, an anodyne map is uh, just uh, a trivial or an acyclic cofabration. Okay, if, uh, yeah, the lifting property means that every commutative square has a diagonal filler. Okay. Uh, okay, now uh, we are ready to introduce the notions of tribe. So, a tribe is a clan. Uh, so you need to have a class of fabrication, but then you have axioms. So a tribe is a TLA satisfying some condition. There are two conditions. The base chance of an anodyne map along a fabrication is anodyne. And also that every map admit a factorization as an anodyne map followed by a fabrication. Again, if you are familiar with the notions of uh, uh, model category in the sense of Quillen, you will recognize there some part of the axioms of Quillen. Okay, and now a normomorphism of tribe is, uh, 
the homomorphisms of Klang, which take uh, anodyne maps to anodyne maps, which preserve the anodyne maps. Okay. Okay, so that's somehow the basic uh, notion that I would like you to look at, the notions of tribe. Okay, now an example of this and, uh, is the tribe of CAN complexes. So I recall that uh, a simple set is a CAN complex if uh, every horn has a filler. And a map of Saint-Pierre set is a can fabrication if every commutative square, uh, uh, like this on the left, uh, has a diagonal filler. Uh, now, the category uh, of uh, can complexes has the structure of a tribe where a fabrication is a can fabrication. Uh, uh, maybe a remark is that in this category of can complexes, a map is anodyne if, if, if and only if it is um, a monomorphism and homotopy equivalence, or if, you know, if, if it is a strong deformation retract also. Okay. So let's go to next. I will do a little bit of the theory of tribe, and then I will translate this into the language of type theory. So I assume that the notions of tribe is something you may be familiar with, or you may have seen something similar. So uh, the first thing is that uh, given a tribe, E, you can construct another tribe by slicing the category E over an object A, except that you don't take all the object of E over A, you only take the fabrication. So you take the full subcategory of the category E over A, uh, whose objects are the fabrication. Okay? And now in there, you declare that the morphism is a fabrication if the underlying map in E is a fabrication. Again, this is very familiar with things we do in the Quillen model category. Okay, so uh, you get in this way a, a new tribe, which is EA, and I like to call that an elementary extension of E. Uh, Uh, in the sense that, uh, let me make an analogy, a tribe is a little bit like a ring, if you like. I would like to make this analogy. And uh, given a commutative ring, you can extend the ring by adding new elements, for example, a variable polynomial ring, and uh, new elements with a relation, if you want. And this elementary extension here, which, which is just here, this is just the base change along the projection from A, the object A to one. So this functor here uh, is uh, extending the tribe A by adding a new element uh, to, to A as we, uh, I will explain later. So this is uh, the reason for the terminology. So an example of uh, morphisms, of uh, homomorphisms of tribe, is just the base change functor. If you have a base change functor, you have an homomorphism. Okay. Now I can uh, describe the type theoretic notation. So if you have a tribe E, then you may decide to call an object of E a type, okay? If you do that, you have your first step in type theory. You just call the object of a tribe a type. And you use uh, this notation uh, 
here, or, or this one, okay? Uh, this is like a, a form of atomic notation in type theory. Uh, this is a, a statement. You, this statement here is declaring that A is a type. It's a declaration. In Martin Love type theory, this is called a judgment. So this judgment is a declaration that uh, the symbol capital A is a type. Uh, and in addition to declaring type declarations, you have uh, declarations for elements. So if you remember that the tribe as a terminal object, so you can consider a map from the terminal to A, and then uh, you regard this as an element of type A. And this is maybe the notation that type theory uh, are using, most of the right-hand side. It means that uh, the letter A, small a, is uh, representing an element of the type A. But type theorists, they often call an element of type A, they call that a term of type A. Uh, that's fine with me. Martin Love told me that he was objecting with that, you see. In set theory, when you say that uh, uh, an element, uh, let's say uh, x is uh, uh, something, x is an element of a set S, you say an element, you don't call x a term of, you can, okay. So uh, I'm going to use, uh, uh, to confirm with uh, Martin Love's uh, point of view that uh, you're really describing elements uh, uh, as uh, Professor Deligne also was uh, doing uh, this, uh, uh, this morning. Okay, now that's the important thing here is that um, every fabrication has fibers. So given a fabrication from uh, uh, P from E to A, uh, you can pull it back along an element and you get an object, which uh, I write EA, yeah? And uh, you get a family of types indexed by uh, elements of, uh, of type A. Now, uh, the object itself the map P itself is defining an object of the elementary extension. So this pair here is an object here. This is called a dependent type in, type, in context A in type theory. So a type theorist will write, will write this, this thing, this, this judgment. They will say, okay, I have a fiber, which I call EX, which is a type, which depend on the variable x. So this is called a dependent type, okay? Uh, but uh, it's very important to see that uh, x is a variable here. x is not a symbol for a particular map from one to a. It's a, it's a, it's a variable, okay? Uh, uh, so it's, it's, it's the uh, fiber of this map at a variable element, x in E. Okay, and also if you have a fabrication, it may have a section. And if you have a section, you would get uh, an element in the fiber uh, for for every element of uh, the base of the fabrication. And the type theorist, a type theorist will write this as saying, okay, I have an element, a variable element of a variable type, which depend on a variable element of A. That's simply, he is actually describing the sections of a fabrication. Okay, and in type theory, 
uh, there is something called change of parameters. So uh, this corresponds to actually base change. Uh, sorry, I, uh, I have to go back. Okay, so this corresponds to base change. Uh, so if you have a map in a tribe, you can uh, pull it back uh, fabrations over B to, and get a fabrations over A. And in type theory, this is called, uh, this is an operation of substitution. Uh, you, con you have the map F and you're replacing the variable X by Y equal F of X in the expressions. So, uh, so for example, here you have a, a family of type over B and you're replacing y by f of x, so you, you see you go to the line under. This is a deduction rule here. This is called a deduction rule. You go from this judgment to this judgment, and there is a deduction, deduction rule, which is uh, called substitution. And uh, you have it for variable types on the left-hand side, and also for uh, variable elements of variable types, okay? Well, this is just pulling back along uh, a map, uh, fabrications along a map. Okay, uh, in particular, uh, the elementary extension, which is actually uh, pulling back along the map from A to one, the terminal object, is called context extension, okay? So uh, you start with a type B in E, and, and, and you get a, a type in EA, but uh, the fiber, if you do B cross A, this is what uh, the functor E is doing, the fiber is B, so what you did somehow is nothing to B. You just uh, extend the context of, uh, of, uh, of the judgment. So you pass from the judgment where the, it's context free, there is no, and, but here you have a context now, okay? And you can do it for types and also for elements. And uh, this gives you the possibility of defining a map in type theory because if you want to define a map between two types in, te in, in type theory, uh, well, you see the map as defining a variable element of B indexed by a variable element of A. So uh, a map is actually an element, a variable element of B de defined in the context uh, X in A. Uh, th this is something we do all the time in mathematics. The difference, I would say here, is that there is a precise notation associated to things that we do all the time. And the purpose, one purpose of this precise notation is that a computer can read it. I mean, you can actually uh, type this on a computer and then the computer will start to, 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 to do calculations on this. Okay. And uh, now you have also uh, a summations operation uh, uh, that are there in a tribe. Um, because if you have the, the, the elementary extension functor pulling back has a left adjoint, uh, this is just about forgetting the, uh, the, uh, the the structure map of the, of, of the object EP. So what it means is that if you have a family of types indexed by an element A, you can sum all these types. Uh, e here, uh, the, we know that the uh, total space of a fabrication is actually sort of the union. Actually, it's a sum of all the fabers. So that's uh, what, uh, what is done here. Uh, we replace the family 
by E. But uh, E now has this notation, because uh, in type theory, what we have are the fibers. And if you want to go to get E, well, we have this summation operation. OK. And more generally, you can uh, uh, do a summation along the fibers of a map. So if you have a fabrication, then the base change functor has a left adjoint, which is just actually composing with F. So you can do summation. And in type theory, this is what you're doing here. Uh, you have a family of fibers. And you have a map from A to B. Well, if you take a point in Y, look at the fiber, uh, F minus 1 R Y, OK? F is a fibration, so uh, actually I'm, I'm writing F minus 1, but this could be called uh, A of Y instead of F minus 1 of Y. And you can do that. So you can sum a fabrications along uh, an, another fabrication. And this is just a composition. It's the fact that composite of two uh, fabrication is a fabrication. OK, uh, now. Uh, OK, now in addition to have left adjoint to the base change functor, F star, in type theory, you have also a right adjoint, which is product along a fabrication. OK. So this is just the right adjoint. Uh, the right adjoint satisfies some kind of uh, strong conditions of being a right adjoint. Uh, first, uh, it should take uh, anodyne maps to anodyne maps. And uh, the beck chevalier conditions should hold. Now, if you don't know the beck chevalier condition, it doesn't matter. It's just a, a condition that says that you uh, are taking product and uh, Base change commutes. You can do, if you do the product and then a base change, you can do this uh, two operations in, the, in a different order. Do the base change first and do the product after. And uh, uh, in particular, the elementary extension functor uh, here has a right adjoint, which is product. OK, so you, if you take a family of types indexed by x, you can do a product. And now you get into E, because it's no longer dependent on x. OK. Um, and then in a, in a tribe, you, can, you have path objects. So a path object for an object A is obtained by, as uh, in Quillen model category, by factoring the diagonal as an anodyne map followed by a fabrication. So for, remember that uh, in a tribe, every map has, can be factored as an anodyne map followed by a fabrication. So if you do that for a diagonal, you get the notions of a path object for A. So you can define an homotopy between two maps using these path object. And you can show that the homotopy relation is a congruence. Uh, and uh, so you can define the homotopy category as the quotient category by this congruence. And then you can define what is an homotopy equivalence. Uh, if it is uh, invertible in the homotopy category, and uh, you check that every anodyne map is in a multiple equivalence. And uh, you declare that an object is contractible if the map from x to 1 is in a multiple equivalence. OK, very standard stuff. Now I come back to uh, the uh, multiple, the type theoretic interpretation. In machine of type theory, there's a type constructor which associates to every type another type actually a dependent type, which is called the identity uh, of type A. And uh, what's important to, to, to know is that uh, an element of, of this type is regarded as a proof that the two elements x and y of A are equal. 
And there is a reflexivity term which prove that x is equal to x. And there are rules about that. There is something called the J rules and et cetera the rule. But the rule uh, about the equality are completely consequences of the axioms of a tribe. I mean, if you know, if you feel comfortable with the tribe, then uh, these axioms uh, becomes very natural. So we don't need to put any more axiom uh, if we know that uh, we are actually looking at a tribe. And um, so the additive type is actually a path object. So if you define the identity of A as the total space of this fabrication, uh, then you have a factorization of the diagonal as a reflexivity term followed by uh, a map which you could call source and target. And uh, uh, it was observed by Awudi and Warren and uh, independently by Wojewodzki that this factorization is a path object for it. Okay. Okay, now, uh, a types, a tribe is, a, is actually a brown fabrication category. Uh, I give, I remember, I recall here uh, uh, what is a brown fabrication category, uh, just to, so that you can see the difference between a brown fabrication category and a tribe, is that in a brown fabrication category, you start with two classes of maps, fabrication and weak equivalence. And then you put axioms. Uh, on the fabrications on these two. But these two classes of maps are kind of independent uh, in the sense that uh, uh, a given the class of fabrication does not determine the class of uh, W, okay? It, that you could have, uh, you could change uh, W and keep the same class of fabrication and you will have two uh, structure of brown fabrication category. Okay, W is sort of uh, relatively independent of, of F. It's an extra structure. It's not enough to have E and F. You see, like here, like here. You see, you have a clan, but then you, no, these axioms. But in the case of a tribe, uh, you only start with the class of fabrication. Okay, type theory is based on a class of fabrication satisfying some axiom, okay? And the, the, the equivalences, the homotopy equivalents are defined from the fabrication. W is defined in the case of a tribe, okay? Uh, okay, now uh, I come with the difference between Type theory and the theory of tribes. A tribe is a sort of the semantic of a type theory, okay? Because you can interpret type theory in a tribe. They are very close because actually the uh, syntactic category of, uh, of type theory is a tribe. So actually it's, uh, it's almost the same thing, okay? But still there are differences and uh, it, let's look at the notions of contractible object. I already defined the notions of contractible object in a tribe because I had uh, definitions of the notions of homotopy equivalence. And an object is contractible if the map from A to the terminal is an equivalence, okay? So that's the definitions of a contractible object in a tribe. But there is another definition of a contractible object and it was uh, observed or given by uh, Wojewodzki Okay, uh, so the definitions of Wojewodzki for a contractible object uh, in, in type theory is that uh, you say that uh, an object A is contractible if um, this object here has an element. And the object is contractible is this. It's, it, it's uh, the sigma pi identity f x y. Okay, now, what does it mean? It's very good to compare that with, uh, you replace the uh, summation symbol by the existential quantifier. 
So instead of saying there exists uh, summations over Y, you replace this by there exists Y in A. And you replace the product symbol by the universal quantifier. And you replace this by the equality. And, and you, you see that uh, it means that there exists a Y such that every X is equal to Y. So this is saying that A is a singleton. Okay? And this translation uh, of uh, uh, type theory to ordinary predicate logic is called the Curie-Howard correspondence. Well, that's a kind of fancy name for a very simple idea uh, that uh, in type theory, uh, the uh, universal quantifier of classical logic is replaced by a sum, and the uh, I'm sorry, the universal quantifier is replaced by a product, and the existential quantifier is replaced by a sum. Okay. And um, actually, Martin Loeff, uh, this was the view of Martin Loeff. Uh, Martin Loeff, this is a, a, a formula of type theory here. Ah, sorry about that. I have a, uh, this is a, a formula in Martin Loeff type theory here. And uh, uh, this uh, formula uh, is understood as a predicate, as a first order formula by Martin Loeff. It's, it's the, the understanding, the interpretations of Martin Loeff is like that, okay? Okay, and now also, <clears throat> what is predicate logic about? If you look at the formulas of predicate logic, you can read it, and it's a statement. It's a statement. It belongs to the language. It's like a, you can read it in English. You can read it in French. It's a statement. It says something, okay? So there is a big difference between formal logic where the basic object are statements, where you, and you want to know if these statements are true or not, things of the sort, or if one statement implied the others, and a category, because a tribe is a category, and an object in a category is something passive. It's like a landscape. If you look at the landscape, you have maybe a mountain on this left, and maybe something on the right, and etc. These are objects, they, they are passive, okay? And if you start to describe these objects, then you get into uh, sentences. You have to make sentences, okay? So the sentences are about the descriptions of, of a landscape. And a, a category is more like a landscape that can be described. Uh, I, I think there is a famous uh, example due to Frege. Uh, it is the, uh, about the, the planet Venus. The planet Venus is the uh, morning star, the morning star. So when you say the morning star, you're uh, describing Venus, but it can be also described as the evening star, okay? Uh, the, the morning star is equal to the evening star, but there's only one star, it's Venus, okay? Venus belongs to the landscape, but the morning star and the evening star, these are statements that refer to the language, okay? And uh, that's the marvelous thing about type theory, is that uh, uh, we can s sort of see the objects as making statements. For example, uh, uh, this is uh, a statement that says that uh, A is contractible. Okay. Uh, and I would like, I need to describe what is the notions of uh, equivalence. And Wojewski is describing an equivalence, saying that a map is an equivalence if it's fiber, if all its fibers are contractible. And uh, this is this statement here. Uh, F is an equivalence if for every Y the fiber of F at Y is contractible, okay? 
And um, uh, if you want to show that uh, a map is an equivalence, you want to find an element, a proof of this statement, which is an element of this object of this type. Okay. Uh, of course, there is also the, uh, I want, yeah, A implies B. In type theory, A implies B is the objects of maps from A to B. Uh, this is defined as the product uh, of B over X. And then you can introduce the object of homotopy equivalences between A and B uh, just by this formula. The object of homotopy equivalence between A and B is the sum over F of uh, F is an equivalence. Just amazing. I find it uh, just marvelous, uh, marvelous. Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me, what, what you call an object is a type, right? It's not the form, it's a type. An object is a type, awesome. yeah. But uh, here, uh, this, the summation uh, operation is of, over a variable f, OK? Of course, uh, if you want to show that, uh, uh, that uh, to construct an equivalence from A to B, you want to find an element of this object. OK, now there is another construction you can, you can do with a fabrication. Uh, you, took, you take two fibers of this fabrication. You call them x and y. And you look at the object of equivalence between uh, EX and EY, and you take the sum over all XY. And uh, then you get the factorizations of the diagonal, uh, where uh, U, the map U here, is actually representing the identity map uh, from EX to EX. OK, that's a mathematical constru construction which is uh, kind of uh, interesting because you're sort of looking at uh, the way the different fibers uh, of P uh, can be compared uh, using equivalences, OK? And, and now, using that, you can introduce the notions of univalent vibration. So, uh, because using the uh, lifting fr properties of anodyne maps, uh, the reflexivity term uh, of the path object, which is called R, uh, here you have a commutative square just because, uh, uh, because uh, for, for free, I mean, uh, with no cost. And uh, you get a diagonal filler because uh, the canonical map uh, P1, P2 is a fabrication by construction. On the left, you have an outline map, and you etc. So uh, then you say that the fabrication is univalent if this map here is a multiple equivalence, or is an equivalence, if you like. And now, if you look at it fiber-wise, because a family of maps, th this map, uh, gamma, uh, is actually a map between two fabrations. You see, this, is, this map, gamma, this is a fabrication. This is the, sort of the path object. And this is a fabrication. This is also a fabrication. This is a map between fabrication. And a map between two fabrication is sort of globally in equivalence. Uh, if uh, it is an equivalence uh, fiber-wise. So uh, to be univalent means that uh, uh, this map that you just constructed is a uh, nomotopy equivalence for every x, y. And now you will recognize the univalence, uh, maybe, I hope, because uh, on the left-hand side of this uh, map, here you have x, the identity type. So we are looking at paths from x to y. And 
what this map is doing is that if you have a fabrication and a pap from x to y, uh, then uh, you can connect the fabers by an equivalence. And this is what gamma is doing. Gamma is a kind of connection, okay? So maybe this is the, you can think of it uh, like this. It's a connection. I don't, uh, I'm not saying that this is a, a connection without curvature, but it is a connection, right? Given a path from x to y, you get an equivalence from a x to y. And now, if this is a homotopy equivalence, uh, then uh, the fabrication is said to be univalent. OK. Now, uh, I want to discuss universal fabrication. And to have universal fabrication, you need uh, notions of uh, small fabrication. Uh, because uh, otherwise, there is a problem with uh, like a Russell paradox, things of this sort. So uh, you need to distinguish uh, between the fabrication uh, a subclass uh, where the fibers are small in some sense. And here I'm putting axioms, uh, but uh, you don't need to read these axioms because they just want to express uh, some property of smallness, okay? So there are axioms for small fabrication. Uh, now, in the tribe of Kahn complexes, uh, there is a notion of k small fabrication for every strongly inaccessible cardinal. Uh, if you have uh, uh, Kahn fabrication, you may say that it, the Kahn fabrication is k small if uh, all the fibers are, uh, have cardinality smaller than k. You do the sort of uh, the obvious thing. And, uh, uh, and for the notions of universal fabrication, I'm going to use the notions of homotopy Cartesian square. So uh, commutative square is said to be homotopy Cartesian, whatever I recall the definition here. I hope you are familiar with the notions of homotopy Cartesian square. But it's just the usual uh, notion. Uh, if J is a fabrication, uh, you just pull back J along the map from A to B, and you ask that the map from F to this pullback is in, in equivalence. But if J is not a fabrication, you have to do a fabricant replacement. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, universal fabrication. Now, uh, I, I would like to call a fabrication, a small fabrication, universal. If uh, every fabrication, every small fabrication, is actually uh, a pullback uh, of uh, up to equivalence of this universal one, and if moreover the uh, pair phi phi prime is a multiple unique, the pair phi phi prime is like the classifying map of uh, your fabrication P. So. Um, so U is a kind of moduli space for uh, small fabrication, and this is the universal fabrication Q itself. Um, uh, now, Voivodsky uh, observed that the uniqueness condition uh, for, uh, of, of the pair here is, is, uh, is actually equivalent to requiring that Q is univalent. Okay, so univalence is just, uh, I would say, uh, the correct condition to make sure that the pair phi phi prime is homotopy unique. So uh, uh, you may call uh, U a universe if uh, uh, the codomain, or maybe you call UQ a universe. And in Martin Love type theory, uh, has only pseudo universe. Uh, they are not univalent. You cannot show that the pair phi phi prime is homotopy unique. And this is, the, the, this is what uh, uh, Voivodsky observed, is that uh, in Martin Love type theory, they had, uh, they had not given any uniqueness condition. They have uh, universes, but uh, phi is not uh, unique in some sense, OK? So, uh, uh, so it was kind of very natural to edit, but 
I would say natural, but <laughs> in retrospect, it looks that this was obvious to do. It's kind of uh, strange that it had not been done before. And uh, you may say, maybe it, has, it had not been done before because type theorists were working on their side, okay? Geometers and the multipeterists on the other side, and they were not talking to each other, okay? And, but Wojewodzki, by starting to use the Cox system, sort of uh, began to understand what the type theorists were doing, and then he was able to complete uh, what they were doing. And this, was, uh, this is really a very important uh, new axiom, because many things depend on it. Now you can do homotopy theory axiomatically using uh, the fact that you have universal vibration. Okay, and of course, uh, Wojewski observed that the, the tribe of Kant complex has a universe for every uh, strongly uh, inaccessible cardinal K. And he had the idea of completing uh, univalent uh, uh, marginal of type theory by adding uh, the univalence principle that uh, the, these universes are univalent. Uh, you can complete uh, Martin Love type theory by adding the univalence conditions as an axiom. Okay, that's one way. But uh, there's a better way to do it, uh, which is with, for example, with cubical type theory, because uh, you extend the type theory uh, in such a way that you can prove uh, the uh, univalence principle. So the invariant principle can be proved in uh, cubical type theory. Uh, and uh, cubical type theory has normalization. In other words, every term has a normal form. Uh, and uh, this is not something that you will have if you just uh, add the axiom of univalence uh, to martin love type theory. You lose the normalization. But uh, if you modify the uh, martin of type theory, uh, like in the cubical type theory, then you have a new normalization procedure and you can actually prove the, uh, okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay, now I would like to describe uh, descent. Uh, so I need to remember what is an homotopy push out square, uh, homotopy co-Cartesian. This is just the dual of homotopy Cartesian. Uh, but I need to move out uh, of the theory of tribe for a moment. So you may think of it as being in a moral category like simply says set, etc. So uh, square is a multiplicate co-Cartesian, etc., etc. I hope uh, you are a bit familiar with, with this notion. And uh, uh, okay, now I this this okay. Given a cube. I describe what is a descent for cube or cubical descent. Given a cube in a category E, uh, if you look at the cube from the above, uh, you see a square. So this is uh, uh, one of the vertical corner of the square. This F here is actually a map going down from the top. Uh, of the cube to the bottom, and beta here is, is a face, it's the back face of the cube, okay, this beta. And this is another corner of the cube. This is a right-hand face, and this is the front face, and this is the left-hand face, okay. So it's, it's, I do this translation because uh, it's easier to express things in this way. Okay, so now there is a theorem that uh, in the category of simply says set with the model structure, with the Quillen model structure, uh, if you start with uh, a square like this, so the square, it's a square in the category of arrows. So you, you have the category of simply says set, and I exponentiate it uh, with uh, the post set zero one. So we are here in the category of arrows, okay? That's in the category of uh, arrow category of, uh, 
And so if you have a square in the category of arrow, so it's really a cube, right? Uh, suppose that the square is homotopy co-Cartesian. Uh, now, what this condition just means that the top face of your cube is homotopy co-Cartesian and the bottom face is homotopy co-Cartesian. So you have somehow uh, push-outs, homotopy uh, push-out. And uh, then if uh, the square alpha and beta here are homotopy Cartesian, then the square delta and gamma are also homotopy Cartesian. Okay, that's the descent uh, property for Q. Uh, now, what does it mean? It means, if you look at it closely, it means that if you have a push out, uh, an homotopy push out in the category of spaces, and you look at the fabrication over the space defined by this push-out. You look at the fabrication. Th then this fabrication can be decomposed by pulling, pulling it back along the three pieces that, de that are defining the push-out. OK. And not only that, you could do the reverse. You could actually construct a fabrication over the push-out by doing the reverse. Now, this is false in a tuples for a general uh, push-out. This descent principle is really homotopy theoretic. This is not true in, uh, in a tuples, for example. This is not true in set. Uh, for certain kind of push-out in set, uh, it will be true, but they were are special kind of push-out. But here, this is true for general push-out. It's just an amazing thing. And um, uh, uh, now, univalence implies descent. And the proof is very uh, simple. So I leave it as an exercise uh, to, to you. Uh, but uh, you will have to work a little bit. Uh, so but the idea is that uh, you want to show that delta and gamma are, are homotopy Cartesian. The conditions is that alpha and beta are homotopy Cartesian. They are squares, alpha and beta, and they are uh, homotopy Cartesian, and you want to show that gamma and delta are homotopy Cartesian. So what you do is that you construct a bigger <coughs> diagram with uh, phi, phi 1, and phi 2 homotopy Cartesian. And you, there's a general lemma that if, you, if uh, the composite of two squares homotopy Cartesian and this one is homotopy Cartesian, then this one will be also homotopy Cartesian. There's a general lemma. So it's just a matter of constructing phi 1, phi 2, and, uh, and phi, a multiple Cartesian map to something, and it will be uh, OK. So how do you do that? Well, you classify the fabrations. You may suppose that uh, all these uh, f, h, and k, g, and k are uh, confabrations, and you classify them uh, into some univalent uh, confabrations. So it could be a universe, q, is just, uh, and um, you classify it. And uh, so you get, uh, you classify G and H, okay? Okay, so these are classifying map here. This is a classifying map. And now you use the fact that this is a nomotopy co-Cartesian to get a map here. But then you have a problem of showing that this is uh, homotopy Cartesian. And there you have a little bit of work to do and uh, I will leave it to you. OK. Uh, now, uh, the notions of uh, model topos was introduced by Charles Reck. And uh, one definition is to say that this is a left exact bus field localization of a pre sheaved category with value in simple cell set. Another uh, description, and it's a kind of uh, it's a characterization theorem. Uh, 
uh, of uh, this combinatorial uh, model category. So there are two, uh, two conditions. Uh, uh, first, that the base change along uh, a map uh, preserve homotopy co-limits. And uh, the second condition is the descent principle. Now, if you start with uh, type theory, you have the uh, syntactic category of type theory, matter of type theory. There is a syntactic category, you get a tribe. Now, you can do an homotopy localizations of this. You get uh, locally Cartesian uh, quasi-category. This is a theorem of Kapulkin and Subilo. Actually, uh, there are two papers, one by Kapulkin and Sunilo, and the other by Kapulkin. But um, in other words, you can go from Martin Love type theory to locally Cartesian closed category, uh, quasi categories. Uh, this is just uh, uh, people sometimes also call it uh, infinity category and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but if you start with cubicle type theory, where uh, the um, uh, where uh, the univalence uh, axiom uh, old, and if you do that, uh, uh, I'm not sure it has been published yet, or if someone has written a proof, uh, maybe Mike Schulman, but you should get into infinity toposes, and possibly into elementary infinity toposes. In other words, there is close connection between a univalent type theory and the theory of elementary infinitary toposes. Although we don't know exactly uh, yet what, uh, in, what is an elementary, there will be a talk by uh, Mike Schulman at this conference on elementary infinity toposes. So there is a connection, and therefore, things that you can do here or here can be interpreted there. There is a connection, you see, between these things. Uh, it's quite clear that uh, many of the things that, that you can do here can be lifted up here. But uh, people have an opinion, et cetera, but uh, um, it's not always uh, totally obvious how to do that, but uh, okay. Now, I recall the Blaker's Massey theorem. Uh, you need to know what is a connected map uh, for that, uh, and connected map. So, uh, uh, the idea, assuming that you know what is an end-connected space, which is defined here, uh, then you may call a map uh, end-connected here if uh, its homotopy fibers are end-connected. Uh, this is not totally the standard convention here because, uh, unfortunately, homotopy theorists have been calling this n plus one connected. And it's, uh, from my point of view, I'm sorry for, it's, not, it's kind of uh, not uh, a, a, very, a good convention. I prefer a, a Grothendieck convention, which is that if you want to qualify a map, you look at the fibers, okay? So uh, uh, a map uh, is, we call a map n connected if its homotopy fibers are n connected. Okay. Now, the Blaker's Massey theorem is saying this. Uh, well, there are many statements, but this statement uh, was uh, given by Goodwillie, I think, that if you have a uh, homotopy push out or homotopy Cartesian square of St. Pisa's set, and if uh, F is n connected and G is n connected, then the canonical map uh, to the pullback, the homotopy pullback. So you take now the homotopy pullback of this part here, and you have a map from A to the homotopy pullback. And then this uh, canonical map is M plus N connected. Okay. Uh, let me just give you, if you're not familiar with it, the consequence of that is the uh, uh, is the fundamental suspension theorem. 
that if you have a pointed uh, end connected space, uh, then the canonical map from the loop to the suspension is two end connected. Oh, yes, right. Uh, I'm really. Now, uh, okay. Uh, a type theoretic proof of the Blacker Mercer theorem was found by uh, here uh, during the uh, program, uh, Univalent Foundation program in 2012-13 by uh, uh, a team of four persons, Favonia, Finster, Licata, and Lomsdane. And the proof is new. <laughs> it's just amazing. It's, 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 I would say it's a totally new proof. And um, it was reformulated in the language of model categories by Charles Reck. Uh, and because I think Charles Reck wanted to understand it because it's a new proof. So Favonia, I think, also uh, was helpful for doing that. And um, the proof is using descent, of course, it's type theory and using univalence descent for cube. And uh, it was generalized later by uh, Anel Biederman and Finster and myself. And uh, the generalized uh, Blakers Massey is, uh, in which sense is it generalized? You replace the class of n connected map by, uh, by uh, class, the left class of a modality. So we need to know what is a modality. So, uh, um, yes, right. Um, what is a modality? A modality in an infinity topos is a factorization system. It, you have the left class and the right class, in which the left class is closed under base change. And um, an example is a class of effective epimorphism in the topos, and R is a class of monomorphism. Every map can be factored as an effective epimorphism followed by a monomorphism. Uh, uh, more generality, generally, you can take the class of n-connected maps and the class of n-truncated maps, and you get a factorization system. And the left class is always stable under base change. And uh, uh, I need the push-out product uh, for the generalized blakers massey so this is a familiar operation, the push-out product of two maps. This is uh, this construction. Uh, and um, here is the statement. Uh, I need a diagonal of a map. If you have a map, you can uh, construct this diagonal, uh, which is uh, uh, just the usual things. It's, it's the diagonal of A as an object over B, you see. OK, and here is the theorem. You start with a modality in some infinity topos E. And uh, you consider a push-out square in there. You have a push-out square. And now the condition is that if the push-out product of the diagonal of F and the diagonal of G is an L, then uh, the uh, uh, map the canonical map from Z into the homotopy pullback, which is actually the pullback in the infinite topos, is actually uh, in L, you see? So it's, it's very abstract, but let me give you a special case of this. Uh, <clears throat> suppose that F is, is monic, is a monomorphism. Then if F is a monomorphism, then its diagonal is an isomorphism. Actually, this is what you know, how you can define a monomorphism. It has the, diag the diagonal is uh, an isomorphism. And uh, you, very easy to see that the push out product of a map with an isomorphism is also an isomorphism. So a special case of this theorem is saying that if you have a push out, and uh, if this map is monic, then the push out is a pullback because the class of isomorphism is uh, the left class of a modality. It's somehow the smallest modality. So this theorem contains a very uh, uh, known, well-known theorem uh, in, uh, in topos theory, that if you take a push out in which this map is a monomorphism, then the, the map is a pullback. But here, here is the weaker condition. 
that the diagonal of f, uh, et cetera. OK. Uh, now, of course, the, low, the generalized black hermacy implies the uh, usual black hermacy theorem. And uh, uh, now, uh, the proof of the generalized black hermacy theorem is using descent, some kind of generalized descent. And uh, now I, let me finish with good really calculus. Thank you for, uh, uh, maybe I'm a bit late. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Okay, so how, what's the application to good really calculus? Uh, now I say, let S be the quasi-category of spaces. Well, you could think of it as the uh, model category of uh, spaces or of simply set set, if you like, and uh, S dot the quasi category of pointed spaces. And uh, a functor uh, from pointed space to space is said to be a homotopy functor uh, if it preserves directed colimits. That's the definition of Goodwillie. And what uh, Goodwillie does is to associate to uh, a homotopy functor, uh, uh, a homotopy functor, a tower of approximation by what you call n excisive functors. So it's a tower, p0, p1, etc. He approximate the functor f by uh, something called n excisive functor. I will not, uh, I don't have the time to define what is an n excisive functor. But the first approximation is the constant functor with value f of zero. And uh, uh, this uh, Goodwillie Tower is very much like the Postnikov Tower. There's an analogy between the two because given a space, you have the Postnikov section of that space, S0, S1, S2, etc. Uh, so Sn is the, uh, is the N truncated type which uh, approximate X. And the first approximation is the set of uh, uh, <coughs> Connected component of X. And the classical Blacker theorem is a powerful tool for studying the Postnikov Tower theorem. All the classical result uh, about the Postnikov Tower, you know, uh, et cetera, et cetera, can be proved using the uh, Blaker's Massey theorem. I have learned to appreciate the Blaker's Massey theorem um, by working on this. It's really a gem uh, of uh, homotopy theory, the Blaker's Massey theorem, because so many results of basic homotopy theory are uh, depending on the Blaker's Massey theorem. And then Biederman asked the questions, uh, is there a Blaker's Massey theorem for Goodwillie calculus? I mean, could we study the uh, Goodwillie tower uh, uh, exactly as we do with the, uh, uh, with the Postnikov tower, but using uh, 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 versions of the Blaker's Massey theorem? And the answer, is yes, uh, uh, you have to construct uh, a topos. Well, the category of homotopy functors uh, from S dot to S is actually a topos because an homotopy functor is completely determined by its value on the finite spaces, on finite pointed spaces. And, and uh, uh, the category of finite point space, pointed space is actually an infinite topos. It's a, it's a pre-sheave category. And uh, uh, it's a result of Goodwillie that the uh, Goodwillie PN, the approximation uh, of, by, of, of a functor by uh, an N excessive functor is uh, left exact reflection. Um, so it, it follows that uh, uh, the subcategory of uh, N excessive functor is actually an infinite topos. Okay, now uh, if you have an infinite topos uh, uh, and you have a left exact reflection, you can easily construct uh, modality. Uh, and you say that a map uh, is a P equivalence if it reflects into an equivalence. And uh, a map is P local if uh, the following square here is Cartesian. And this defines a modality which depends only on the reflection. This modality is called a left exact modality. It's a special kind of modality, which is very important. 
Now, the analogy that uh, uh, Biederman was looking at for was to compare spaces with the multi functor, Posnikov Tower to Goodwillie Towers, and connected map with PN equivalents, and truncated maps with PN local maps, and the Blaker Massey theorem with a Blaker Massey theorem for, uh, uh, for Goodwillie calculus. And here is the theorem. The theorem actually is a straightforward consequence of the generalized uh, <coughs> Blaker Massey theorem as long as we use this lemma. And this lemma was kind of tricky, is that the fact that the push-out product of a PM equivalence with a PN equivalence is a PM plus N plus one equivalence. Okay, so uh, some applications. Uh, there is a theorem of Goodwillie saying that the category of N homogeneous functor, homotopy functor over a fixed base is stable where n homogeneous means that uh, Pn of f is f, so it is uh, uh, n excisive, and then also that Pn minus one of f is just P zero. This is called the base. And um, you may say that the functor is reduced if uh, Pn of f is zero. And now there is a theorem of Faron, Dwyer, and Lesch uh, saying that uh, if a multiple functor is n reduced, then it is uh, 2n minus 1 excisive. This is like the analog of the Ferdental suspension theorem, and this is a straightforward uh, consequence of the uh, uh, generalized uh, uh, the Goodwillie uh, Blaker's Massé theorem. And uh, there is also a uh, classifying theorem uh, due to Goodwillie, you can introduce K invariant for Goodwillie towers. Uh, if you have uh, a functor F which is uh, uh, N excisive and you project it down to N minus one excisive functor, you have a fabrication here. And this fabrication is a principal fabrication. And uh, so it has a classifying map uh, with value into uh, uh, and an homogeneous, uh, <coughs> an homogeneous uh, um, functor. And uh, I guess, uh, uh, okay. Uh, um, so, thank you.